Just two days ago, Gen G and Sentinels met on this stage in one of the year's most hotly anticipated matches. The Pacific Squad shut down the America's number one seed, sending them back to the lower bracket. And now we find ourselves here at the grand finals for the runback of all runbacks. How will the story end? Let's just go ahead and find out. I'm Golden Boy. You got me. Me got high pocket. This is going to be awesome. Look at this place. It's Dude, back to the brim, The bro. crowd during the show match was absolutely bonkers. What a warm up for them for the grand final. And the game hasn't even started yeah, yet. Yeah, exactly. And they're already this loud. It's already this full. Yeah, it's unbelievable stuff. But regardless of what happens this, on this stage here today, history has already been made thanks to the players on Gen G. History making performances bring them to a grand final. And not just a grand final, Hypoc. They're up from the winner's side. So yeah. they have control of how this competition is going to unfold. Yeah, and I guess the team that there were a couple of question marks about them coming into this event with, uh, well, a little bit of a strange journey here to defeat Paper X in the fashion they yeah. did. Was it an off day for Paper X? You know, what is the real Gen G? But uh, they've just come from strength to strength here in Madrid. They've won nine matches in a yes. row between <laughs> this tournament wow. and their own kickoff. And if they win today, if they could lift that trophy, they would be the first ever Asian Valorant team wow. to do so. It's history in the making. Hey, when you think about the the history and what we've seen from Korean Valorant all the way up until this time, Hypoc. One we've been waiting. Wonder, is this it, bro? Is this it? I didn't think it would ever be anybody else other than DRX, I guess, after the last couple of years. But yeah. I, I'm so glad it's Gen G on uh, basically the brink of achieving this because they have been such an exciting team to watch. Um, some fantastic individuals and personalities as well, maybe. And the thing is, last time we had a Korean team this deep, it was it was new turn. They went yeah. out in the upper finals all the way back in the first ever international tournament for Valorant here. I mean, it's wild that it's taken this long for a Korean squad to come back. But it has some of those same pieces. Lakia, after barely attending international events, after kind yeah. of falling off the radar, going down to tier two, has come back to another international and is now in the finals. And Solo, who was on that Nutrient squad, yeah. is now the coach leading this Gen G team to the run that they've achieved. Yeah, what a journey it has been. But for more on Gen G, let's go ahead and send it over to Yinsu, who managed to get some words with Munchkin. Hello, hello, Munchkin. Welcome to your first grand final. Of course, you're the first Korean team to make a grand final here at a global event. What is the plan for today and how do you make sure you bring a trophy home for your region? Nothing. We just play our own game. <laughs> well, it's worked so far. Thank you very much. Well, it's their game that brought them this far, and it doesn't shock me that Munchkin's coming into this one with a ton of confidence. But here's the thing. Yes, there's history on that side of the field, but let's actually head over to the other side of the stage because it has taken tens almost three years to get back to this spot in a global final. And Mike, this could be a massive achievement for a guy who started off his career in Valorant white hot. Yeah, I mean, as the chosen one, we keep talking about being the chosen one, but uh, this is a player that was so much hype about, so many questions about when, you know, there was a little bit of a drop off and a few iterations of this Sentinels roster. But so far, so good. Looking absolutely, well, godlike, to be honest with you. Back to the original form that we know and love from Tens. Yeah, but the thing is, he's not playing the same roles. He's not yes, doing exactly. the same things. Back then, he could lock Jet, dominate every map, and win every single game. They didn't drop a map on the, that run. But this time around, Tens making it to a final, it has been the hard road. It has been every third map. It has been every lower bracket game. And it's been him playing on new roles, becoming so much more of a team player than he was three years years ago. Yeah, we, we have definitely seen the evolution of Tens throughout his career as a Valorant professional. Actually, here's what Tens had to say about the squad during yesterday's post-match interview. Let's go ahead and take a listen. I think this is the best iteration that uh, Sentinels has had for a roster. Just we work together, we get along, we're great friends, and I think we trust each other, and that's what matters the most best iteration of the roster, but I think we all can agree that most definitely is the case here, Mimi. I mean, it does feel like this Sentinels team, like, just riz, rose back up like a phoenix from the ashes, practically, because it felt like they were pretty much, you know, dead men walking at one point in time, and now here they are in a grand final. Yeah, it's been two years of struggle, three years even of struggle for this organization <laughs> yeah. to make it back to this point as an international competitor, but they've taken the time. They've invested in rookie players along with the veterans. They've brought on a coach 
Coach who has instilled such fantastic fundamentals and has really built a team that is incredibly cohesive. And Sentinels have never really had that to this extent before. Yeah, and that's what makes it so impressive, this run that we're seeing from them. But of course, Tens and Sassy have already held global trophies above their head, but the other eight players on that stage today have not. And in fact, two of them, two of them are here for the first time ever. They literally showed up and then now they're in a final. It's Karen and it's John QT, which is so, it's so incredible because John QT doing this as an IGL yeah. has been utterly impressive, but then Karen genuinely is a god. Yeah, he actually is, well, a ranked god, to be yeah. honest, he pulled straight from the depths of the Radiant Ladder. Uh, but yeah, he's looked absolutely phenomenal individually, but, but also just in terms of, I guess, the, the, his macro kind of input as a controller for Gen.G has been absolutely pivotal to their success. And on the other side for John QT, this is a guy who has been grinding at it since the beginning. He's played in EMEA, he moved over to North America, he grinded had. in Tier 2, even meeting Kaplan back then. Then Kaplan gets this chance with Sentinels. He gets his opportunity on Tier 1, and for a young IGL, he goes absolutely nuclear. His first ever international event, and he's led his team to the finals. And it's not even the performance of, of the calling, it's also his game. Dude, so he's, he's so clutch. I still think that clutch on split, one of the coldest we've had here in Madrid. And it's the same for Caron. Both these yeah, guys, yeah. they're young, they're new to this pressure, and they're both stepping up, winning clutches, popping multi-kill after multi-kill. It is ridiculous what these rookies have achieved. Yeah, it has been mind-blowing without a doubt, but another player who has actually been shattering our brains is Zekin, and he's actually standing by with Yinsu to get some words as we get ready for this matchup. Hello, hello, Zek, and welcome to the Grand Finals. You've had such a great tournament so far. Tell me, what's been the secret and the reason behind your individual success and performance? Uh, I could lie and say that it's hard work and dedication, but the truth is it's all through the Send Bundle. It really gives me the ability and the power to play well, so uh, please go and buy the Sentinels Bundle. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good luck. Capitalism is what powers that young man there. Maybe a little like... bit of hard work and dedication. Maybe just I, a teensy bit. I guess Zek has just had the commission changed in his contract as well. Yeah, as I think so. yeah. My guy's making plays out there. Make sure he can <laughs> pay. In any case, though, folks, there's so much to discuss regarding this game. We genuinely can be up here the entire time. But for now, though, I want to turn the question over to the community. Earlier on, we asked you wonderful people about our MasterCard fan poll. Who do you think is walking away? Masters champion here in Madrid. And it is Sentinels, but you know what? I'll take the 38 point I'll take the 38. I thought it was going to be worse than that, yeah. to be honest with you. I really did. Yeah, Sentinels are the fan favorite today, but you have to give this Gen G squad so much credit. I feel like they've silently made a run here at Madrid, Th beating team after team. No one was super excited about them until no, suddenly, oh, no. they're in the upper finals. Oh, they're in the grand finals. This team just plays fantastic, fundamental Valorant at a very high level. All of their individuals are in white hot form. It's time to stop doubting these guys. They're on the press of maybe lifting a trophy today. Yeah, and I think talking about it being, a, a, you know, quietly along like the, the, the sidelines to the headline, which is Sentinels returning here, looking in yeah. great form. They have just played some really clean Valorant. It's bread and butter. There's not an, an awful lot of flair to it, but they've just looked fundamentally solid. But the thing is for Sentinels, right, if they were going to lift a trophy, it would be the hard way. They played yeah. every match possible in Americas. They went down to the lower bracket. They played through play-ins. They had a long off-season. This is a team who has really dedicated themselves to the grind. Since the beginning of 2024, they have played every match possible, and it's the reason they're so good. You know, I have to say, though, something that has been very impressive on the other side of this stage has been Gen G's well, overall attitude uh, about this this event, this, just their performance as a whole. It genuinely feels like this team, something that we have noticed before, like when DRX would play, or even Paper X, you felt that pressure. For some reason, these guys they, are cool as a cucumber. They, they look like naturals up there. Yeah, it's like, like they belong there. Yeah, like it's, like it's not a big shock to be on the international stage and, and, and you know, facing off against teams like Sentinels, Paper X, Loud, for example, some international veterans. And I love how proactive they are at, at getting up, at talking their talk, at, at just feeling the game. Absolutely. Once they get in control, once they start getting dominant, I feel like it's so hard to stop them because just like once players are yelling, once that vibe is yeah. up, like 
how, who, who's going to turn that off? Well, it, they seem unstoppable. Uh, well, actually, I'm really glad you bring that up because then my eyes kind of turn to the guy who's won a world champion on that stage. Sure. It's yeah. Sassi. And even though his tournament has been a little up and down, a little topsy-turvy, if you will, Mike, I do feel like at this point in time, you got to lean on guys like Sassi, guys like Zelsis to keep the attitude Absolutely. going. Absolutely. You dive into that experience, but also Sassi has been heating up. Last few series, been way more impressed with his individual performance, but also his contribution to some of the executions around his utility, which have been, I'll be honest, the burning questions, not necessarily the numbers he's putting up, it's the value that he's bringing to center. Yeah, also, when he's in the server, even if he's not putting up numbers, he's putting up great supportive utility. One of the reasons why Zekin looks like the best in the world right now is the Gecko or Sky player right. who's saucy behind him. But on top of that, it's the emotional leadership, too. He brings that world championship attitude to this squad. He yeah. lets them know, we can do this. We can win this trophy. And it's the same for Zelsis yeah. as well. They have guys who will keep it, keep them in it today. I don't know if you guys can tell, but your boy's sweating up here because it's hot. I love it. I'm all about <laughs> it. I want to know, though, real quick, who we got taking the dub here? I'm going to play Sentinels. With a double map ban for Genji, it's going to be really tough. Ooh. But if it's the hard road, I can't doubt them. Okay, Sentinels is what Mimi says. Hi, Park, what about you? Genji walking their way to a trophy today. Ooh. I'm telling you. And I, do you know what? We had this conversation before this event started. I was like, I'm not buying it, GB. Dude, I'm I was, not buying it. And you were like, you're like, just watch. Yeah. I'm all in now. I'm I, I was in. confident when I saw it, man. And. <sighs> I won't lie, this is a tough one. Uh, I'm, I, I'm curious to see where we end up for the maps, but genuinely, I, I could see Genji taking this and hoisting a trophy for Korea and for Pacific. They absolutely could. It would be history for them walking on here with rookies, with a roster that had no expectations to make it now to a grand final, to have a chance to beat Sentinels and lift a trophy. It would be an incredible moment for their, their league, for their country, and for all five members on that stage. Oh boy, I hope you guys feel it. The electricity <laughs> in this room is palpable. Everyone, had, I mean, basically the seats are packed. This is going to be a banger and the wait is over. Today, someone's walking away with the trophy. It's Gen G versus Sentinels, a best of five. The Masters Madrid Grand Final starts right now. in the round, a third would be needed. Mind Freak's not stopping. He's got to check. And he does! Sentinels are going to the grand finals! It's good to see them back as well. It's been a while. Looking back at my career as a whole, things don't always go your way. It's not always a perfect road. Hopes and dreams of building a dynasty this year left in tatters. The Sentinels are sent home. They only win a single map in the entire stage. Super disappointing. That's been the story of their year, really, hasn't it? Sentinels are out of LCQ. I am thankful for the opportunities I've been given. Just the, the path that has allowed me to be the person, the player I am today. Newton on map two on Haven to take the series to move forward to the grand finals. Newton surely got rocked here by Sentinels. I was very difficult to I was very difficult to do it. I was very difficult to do it. I was very to do For my premier team, I'm the IGL. Are you planning to make it make it a pro? Is that, is that yeah, that's the plan. I actually came here from the United States I, to come see Masters. First Korean team in the grand finals. It's a long fan here. I came here to study English, but I didn't 
어, 급하게 꺾어가지고 아 경기, 경기 전부 예매했습니다 <웃음> 이거 원치킨 선수 신발 아, 아 신발을 신발인데? 아, 아, 이거는 아, 아, 라키아 선수 옷이랑 아, 아, 선수 룩백이 아, 안 가져오셨다가지고 아, 아, 진짜 개꿀! 어 아, 감사합니다 대박. 일단 저희가 팀 창단 첫 초기에 되게 저희들끼리 침묵을 중요시했어요 특징을 잘 살린다 에? 에? <웃음> 저희가 운이나 그런 게 아닌 진짜 피땀 나는 노력과 그리고 마음 속에 쌓여져 있던 응어리들이 늘 전부 다 해소하면서 여기까지 오게 된걸 알아주셨으면 좋겠습니다. I always kind of dreamed about having Kaede at an event, being able to watch me win it. Just the fact that she's present here now, it means a lot to me. This match is a redemption for us. I've been a fan of Ten since 2021 when I watched him in Reykjavik. Trio Sentinels, I'm saying, I'm gonna calling it. Go Sentinels, Sun City. Go Sentinels! Gen G, they changed their setups to be specifically against what Sentinels does to entry. So meticulous. Gen G, I think they won the... I still don't think I'm not going to be able to win. If I'm going to win the trophy, I'm going to be able to win the trophy. It's not always a perfect road. I'm just really thankful. May the best team win. Hello, everyone. Hola, a todos, Madrid. Es un placer estar aquí con todos vosotros. Aquí, a Madrid, llegaron los dos mejores equipos, los más en forma, representando a cuatro regiones. Y ahora es el gran momento, es el momento que todo el mundo esperaba. Y la pregunta, ¿estáis listos? Bienvenidos a la gran final del Masters Madrid.
difficult road for both of these teams from failing to make an impact at the start of the VCT era to now being in the main event. Only one will hold a trophy over their head and it's now time to determine who walks away as the inaugural champion of the season. Is it the America's number one or the Pacific number one? We're ready for war. It's been over a thousand days since Sentinels and Tens hit a grand final stage at an international event. After grinding it out, finding opportunities for year after year, they've made it back. But they're up against Gen.G, a team that has already made history. The first Korean team to make it to a grand finals and a chance to win the first trophy for their region. And here is your Omen map select, and we're going to see what we're playing in here. And a smart decision for Gen.G. They have both of the bands. They decided to get rid of Lotus as well as Sunset. Good maps for the Sentinel. As to start things out on Breeze as well, maybe looking for a little confidence booster if it's even required to start this series off. It was 13-3 that Gen.G won that map last time. They're Double Landslide. controller, Chet Yorukomp ripped Sentinels apart. This is going to be an epic battle between two teams that not only have crossed paths before, obviously, but for both of these squads, they're really trying to see where are the margins of victory because neither team I'm suspecting is going to be giving anything up. But I'm really looking at that breeze to be the tone setter of this game, just like what Sentinels did to Paper X yesterday on Lotus. I think the tone setter, but then you've got to look towards split. The question marks that have arisen recently around Sentinels, actually, this doesn't even feel front loaded for Gen.G now. Can they on That's that previous true. victory once again. Kaplan did say that Sentinels were ready for anything, that give them Breeze, give them Icebox, they just want to play. They're, they're trying to focus more on their own game today. And that's the same focus that Gen.G said they're after. Still, it's going to be brutal. Back-to-back BO5s, game after game for the Sentinels, while Gen.G has had time to study their opponent yep. and prepare for this rematch. But one has to wonder, though, that lower bracket run, right, gives you the confidence, especially taking out a Paper X team that I think were just shooting out of their minds in this one, especially toward the later end one has to wonder if that kind of warm-up if that if that uh, initial battle could actually pay off for them here in the grand final I mean score lines aside it's an exhausting series to play against a team like paper X but whether or not that now you know kind of puts them in a position to be ready for what Gen G is gonna pull out here in the grand finals you have really have to focus on how incredible it is that Sentinels even made it here right through that BO5. This is yeah. John QT's first international event as an IGL at this level. He played Ascension before, fell flat there, but now he's managed to keep up the calls for so many matches on end. Is it enough today, though? That's the question. We're into the agent select, and there's no surprises. Both teams return to their same comps, but I imagine Sentinels are going to have a new game plan today, Mike. I mean, the other thing being there's some tape now for this Gen G composition. There's an opportunity to go back and study where things went wrong, where there's some possibilities or opportunities to really make some impact on the side of Sentinels. So we know that the Pacific teams really do like this breeze. They like to play aggressive. They like to catch Very you loose guard. Well, Very yeah. loosey-goosey. I think the strong suit for Gen.G in their last match was how disruptive they were in their post punch fighting forward, not letting Sentinels play the set structured retakes that they love to play. Sentinels, honestly, I feel like have a chance to kind of get dragged down into the chaos here by Gen.G with this comp. It's going to be tough for them to take home breeze. Now. Well, this is it. It's now time for the Madrid Grand Final. And let's go ahead and send it over to your casters. It's your boys, Bren and Sideshow. Thank you very much. Let's get this one started in the Madrid Arena. What a stage that's been set up, man. The scintillating Sen City trying to pave that road for a bit of redemption. But they got the pride of Pacific on the other side. And a hell of an advantage waiting for them. That double map ban looks brutal to try and get through. And it starts off here on Breeze. A rematch of our upper bracket finals. And this was the decider. Instead of to close, it's now to open. Side swap, though. So what can Sen learn? They barely played any defense the last times that these two teams clashed. But there is footage out there. And another thing to note, Brent. Gen G won all six pistols last time they played. That's an almost insurmountable advantage. Something that's got to be turned around if you are Sentinels heading into these series. They've, you know, said, mentioned that they're putting a lot of focus on themselves, not too much on the counter striding. I think that might be wise as well. Breeze is going to be a map that really comes down to a bit of form factor. Can you hit your shots? Can you try and take down the big dogs that is Gen G? Because they got some heavy hitters. Munchkin now setting up for the wall. Looks like a bit of an A split. Going straight into John QD's setup. 
Drunk QT just crouched behind this one. Still flash. Molly coming through. Trip as well. And the counter play in oh, order. There it is. The trip kill. Him. Trip kill. Never seen that one before, at least on the big stage. Here it is, though. It's slowed down Gen G to a crawl. Lackey in through the back of the site, though, and there's the response, the return of firepower. Celsius left to pick up those pieces, but already a site has been gained and granted. Shock Dart kills two versus two. And now, as Gen G have to return to grab this spike, Zekin's gone to make the play, wrapping all the way around. He's got a Sheriff favored for long range fights. And that shock not quite as successful as the prior. Sassy's been locked out and has given away his position, and Caron, new to the big stage, so aware, but he's missed the timing. Just barely. From ranked to rookie to tier one stage to the chance to lift the trophy, Caron, looking like he might take that first contact dart. Supportive view till Sassy finding it difficult to really get himself into the position. Second, walking oh, wide, now the dart finally ready, clearing it. At least onto one position here, but time's starting to work and tick against the face from all of them on top now. Sassy versus Lakia, and they're all players against one another. It's Lakia who cleans it up for the pistol. And another one of those pistol rounds going the way of Gen G. The individual skill on this team is so high, even after you see this ridiculous opener for John Cutie. Clearly anticipating an A split from coming through, Sentinels simply couldn't capitalize on it. Lakia, one of those players with a lot of focus on him, was there to open up global events in Valorant. And is here now at our most recent, looking in incredible form. Looking like he wants to have that second shot of revenge. I mean, he's already got it the first time in the upper bracket. Now a chance to really knock them down and deep. Now there's a flash play here with a util. Still is happening on multiple sections here with Mita falling the down. The push down holes. Yep. Push down holes. Trying to squeeze them now with the drone close quarters. Combat might be in order, but again, that's that long sight line. And teams finally coming through with the right clicks. Finally, left clicks getting it done. Shock does pull down. Maybe a bit frantic in terms of that approach. Sassy getting ahead of himself. Delsis doesn't choose to peek his cranium out wide. Still going to be playing his life now. It feels a little bit like a con was missed there because the spike was dropped and yet Tens is going for a repush elbow almost anticipating that Genji would pick the timing to rotate but they had to recover that spike and had to be cautious doing so. Has Tens read this play perfectly though? Guardian in hand and the rest of Genji are coming towards him. Wouldn't this be something here and he's going to be hearing it again the rumble of the footsteps he's trying to take the timing just before anybody was set up for it and they run him down. All grouped up now, three players, Munchkin taking that forward angle. Left. And what could have been a possibility now is just looking just more left. unlikely. Zelsis with the outlaw. Everybody dies in a single shot, but it's a 1v3. He's already been spotted out. Beautiful work from the IGL. So three players surviving. Making it nice and clean here for Gen G off the back of that pistol round. A map that, again, have to iterate here that they are favored in this situation. They've already played 10 on this map here. They absolutely trounced them. That was a dismantling, one that had Dappling claiming full responsibility for the choice to end up here. Had no choice whatsoever when it came to the Grand Finals, with Genji having that double map back. Heading into the bonus round. Meteor not too far away from being able to get close to his Yoru ult, which is super effective to be able to get into these sites. Even the information alone, little jump up, Zekin. Yeah, he's pushed up deep here. Not too much to support him, not too much to trade him, but he sees it, hears it, and there's the kill. Collected onto Munchkin, but it's offset. Immediately onto the other side of the map. No fast pace increase here from Gen G. Happy to just play for that pick, play for the orb, and now slow it down once more. And not prioritizing the orb on Meteor, as I suspected they might, to try to get the dimensional drift online. Instead, just going for texture. And Sen have been picking these kind of timings in the first two rounds to go for little explorations to see if they can get some more info. Instead, though, Zekin and Zelsis doubling up over towards A, anticipating that this would be a re-hit, just confident that John could hold down the other side. Just that, though, massive map control that's been lost here for Sentinels. You can feel it just through the positioning of Sassy. He's having to watch halls in case that lurk comes through. With 40 seconds left. For Gen G now, fully grouped up. Starting to hit into this side that John QT is going to be Sitting side by with his rifle. Might have to try and put a stop to this one, but it's difficult. A lot of adversaries to try and overcome here. Still not showing his hand. Dart 
Potential there to set that one up, but finally a few shots fired and rattle. Texture's been creeping and crawling up onto the angle. Finally, Dan releases it. The trigger straight to the dome there. Sassy dropping into the back of the site. Two left standing here for Sentinels. Disadvantage position. Gotta watch that one though. 80 yes, second. And that's eight seconds left. A round winning play, perhaps, but now a safe plan position for Meteor tucked. Right behind the pillar, we'll be able to get the extension into the round, but can he survive the 1v2? Already through, and second! Nasty work there. Second got shut down completely in the upper bracket final when these two teams played against each other. But you can't keep second down for long. What we saw him do to Paper X, he tore them to pieces. Three out of four of the maps, he was clearly the best player in the server. Dominating not just on Rays, as he has been doing all year, but also finding his form and his footing on Jet, especially with Rifle in hand. The timing on the Cloudburst dropping, just giving him the perfect moment to deny the plant. And grabbing two on the back of it as well. Enormous play, and also demonstrating once more, Bren, that Sen are looking to play this defense aggressively. Not at the beginning of the round, not trying to force the fight, but looking for those mid-round timings to soak up a flank or a bit more info. And second is going to be crucial to that. It's a good adjustment as well. Something to just upset those timings. But Genji, they play really close next? together. Look at this. Drone into elbow really makes it feel like second could be pushing behind this. So everybody on Genji scared. Instead, the double push coming down halls. Great distraction play from Sassy. Meteor though, potentially getting some of that information over towards the one side with a nice blade storm. Running them through and the IGL dropped. And now a scurry and scatter, everybody running over towards that A site, seeing if they can at least reinforce Meteor's position. He's going to be tucked close. Can they get a double face going with Zekin updrafting? Instead, oh. just choosing to face it. TP with a gate crash, not going to be baited out from that one still. Lackey is also getting a move on through Halls. Could be that late look play in that position. Meteor going to be cleaned up there with the trade still. A tap. No one forced out wide. Lackey though, gaining that kill and closing the door in front of him. Neural theft, giving the info. Texture. Now the emphasis placed on him, a dash to the side here, but a pull on line, not half, onto the spike. Could be a big difference maker, could be a massive one in fact. Genji have got them surrounded on almost every single front right now, picking them apart, the threads unraveling. Leave it to just John QT, but again, the time ticking away. It's just far too late for it. Genji, Sauer's up nice and easy onto that third. John not even able to secure the rifle, which could have made a huge difference for Sentinel's economy. If he had been able to keep it, perhaps they would have still been able to buy into the next. I love the play at the beginning of the round from Sen. I think it's really smart. Fake like seconds pushing in one direction, get the pick over towards Halls. But they also just allowed Meteor to run in with his ult and get the plant down. And he essentially did that just all on his own. Yeah. And once you're in an after plant situation and Gen G are walking all over the space, it's much more difficult to clean up. And Sen's retake protocols do not look as good here as on some of their other maps. Definitely tell it's a map that's just been, you know, less honed over time. And Sentinel's just missing a jump there. I mean, a deep dart, I believe, Boys broken enough. early. So Zekin didn't want to take the peak timing. So just holding down towards elbow for Genji again. Happy to play this one nice and slowly. I believe Texture's positioning. He would have heard John Cudi use the aggressive cam over towards B. And that info may well, get, may well get relayed to the rest of the team. Yeah, you can see it being pinged out here, actually, on the mini-map. And so they're expecting the stack to be over towards mid wow. and A. Incredibly deep positioning here. Hunter's Fury going to be offloaded from this particular position. That's Lackier returning it, so you can get a kill, but only the one tag spotting out the positioning of Zelsis. Interesting usage of the ult, but with 50 seconds left now, starting to make their way. Meander over towards that B side. Cosmic Divide will cut this one up nicely. Paul aimed for where John QD has been anchoring in previous rounds. And this composition has so many different ways of getting into B. The Jet and the Yoru very difficult to deny, especially when you have so many smokes online. That pit did not cover the spike. Oh, and a lot of respect as well being showcased as well to a weaker buy of Sentinels, but second. See what damage he can do here. Still with the rifle in his hand. They found the first one, but again, a lot to get through. It's murky territory, a blight onto the B site with that pit, but they really wrangled control of this one. They found Charon, but again, Munchkin is the player that needs to fall to really stand a chance into this one. Yes, it doesn't cover it. Texture alive and kicking, working his way around, but he's been found. Sassy drops him. And one player left to stand is Lackier, crouched, cowering, fear in his heart. He cannot face them. A thrifty win for Sentinels.
That is a bizarre one to start us off with. With a pit being invested as well, you think Genji have just got that wrapped up. It's a gorgeous flash recon play that catches Meteor, but then there's just a lot of timing plays all around the spot. All of these Genji players dying whilst looking the other way. Not being able to use the eco advantage that they had, and actually the pit there ended up hurting them. Not something that's that replicable, but certainly one that Sen can take to the bank. It will be. Moving Get forwards now, plenty of money left waiting. And a lot of equipment what comes with it. Uh, full weaponry, Zekin, so damn aggressive. Now, seems to have an inkling that maybe Karen's there, possibly from a yeah. cam aggressively getting broken. Yeah, for sure. John Cutie's cam got broken in that spot. Now he knows where Garon basically is. The rest of Genji working their way up mid. One of the things that Sen said in their press conference was it was difficult playing against Genji, hard to isolate your ones when they travel around in such a pack. But Genji are running a 1 3 1 D4 here. Smoking it up, looking to take a little bit of mid. But Tens has gone walking all the way down halls here, getting good info for his team. That's fantastic info. He's going to be hearing the scurry of the footsteps from Munchkin, maybe even seeking to punish, but he's going to be calling this now for his team. Look at this. Sassy starts to go. Yeah, good maneuvers. All around the map can really follow those sound cues and follow them well straight towards the B side, but it's going to be setting up for that B split. Out through tunnel. Tens has got to be careful here not to overflank. He just needs to play to contain. He grabs one. No grabs way! Two. And the heads will roll with all that space left. gained. And guess what? Genji just sent. Rattling now. All the way! Man. The move and looking clean with it. Textures. Got something to say still. Only one blade left. Rest of them finding it into the back wall. But there's the refresh and shut down. Traded time. Really, really quite low, only 11 seconds left. It's going to be barely able to get onto left. the side, but Karen has to clear a little bit. He might just have some time, spare barely a second. And yes, we'll be able to get it here, but Sentinel surely don't let this one slip for 1v3. Karen, though, is going to be able to reposition slightly, and Tens is weak. Really weak, he's got so wide. Zelsis needs to be ready! Karen, the movement impeccable, the aim on top. And he's brought it to a 1v1. Yes, damage has been done, but this guy Ranked a superstar, them all the way on the grand stage. He does not seem phased at all. Zekin to face him now. Again, slow walking onto the angle. All the noise and information just being cut away entirely. It could just come down to chance. Cloudburst and straight up into the air. Zekin defusing. Drops down by taking a one. Caron, a menace to him. The scourge of Sentinels rips away the chance of that round. That's an absolutely monstrous, heartbreaking 1v3. And the aim and the precision is pretty natural. It's just, you do not see that. With a phantom, a long range, on freeze, ripping off heads. Yes, the timing on the trade is not perfect. It's not a double swing from Zen. But they don't expect the guy to be holding that and winning that. Karen is just that guy. I mean, he just seems unshaken. Throughout this entire tournament, throughout all of kickoff, doesn't matter the obstacles that you've thrown at the guy. The entire team as well has just been persevering. Sassy is going to have a hell of a lot to deal with here. Drone gets all the info he's looking for, possibly seeing multiple targets. Now the Hunter's Fury of his own. That is going to be left rip, and look at the targets! They just cleave right through them. What a perfect counter to what Genji were going for. Immaculate stuff from Sen. And still throughout all of this, they're looking to go aggressive in other places. Tens has gotten deep, he's going to be able to hear rotations. I think that's such a pivotal part of Sen playing in this finals. Gen.G love to rotate around the map on their attack side and their defense side, getting people into good positions like that for info. Impeccable. Seems like a clear game plan, just disrespecting them. But also, Sassy, really, the playmaker there. Oh, of course. I thought he was going to get overwhelmed. You saw him get the tag onto Meteor. And I thought that Sen were going to get baited into the fact that there was only one there. <laughs> Clearly, a better read than it appeared. The Hunter's Fury obliterated them. A few layers too. I mean, Celsius, the bodyguard, playing inside the smoke, making sure that seconds left. there was no punish in sight when Sassy was ulting. Yeah. It's very solid stuff. And Genji are just going to go for a save here after Karon got them a 1v3. To start their economy flourishing, Sen making sure it dampens just slightly. I don't know left. whether they saw Zekin's operator this round. 
they didn't really interact yeah, with I'm it very much sure. because he went for the peak double doors at the beginning. I have a feeling that Genji don't know that this is online. Yeah. You can see he hasn't even shot a bullet. So that could certainly be another twist in the tail as we head into the next. They're not revealing the hand that they have purchased that one. They might be able to check the money at least in the follow-up now into this round, but yeah, here's that play before as well. I mean, it's so lovely. Vulnerability as well. Yeah, so especially with Zelsis up. throwing the snake bite. Real, real nice. Zekken is going to be here to try to receive this hit if it comes through A. He's taking a gander through double doors, at least looking like he wants to. I, Wall. I up. just, I feel like this is going to be so difficult when Meteor has his Yoruba online. Depressed. Five tags, though. Two found. Deep control of mid. Now, Karen is playing a really far back position here. Seeking to contain. Oh my god. Against the wall. Could just be walking straight into it. Shot missed though. It's a jiggle. And guess what? The entirety of the site has been gained. Given up entirely here just from that dimensional drift. Out of it now. Meteor with the plant. And this is Securing brutal. The texture. This is brutal. You're going to end up having pulls on this. You've got people running. You know, Munchkin's got lineups that he can throw. Offsite post plants buy time for post plant lurks to come through, and this is the game plan for Gen G. Senna not in a position to play no. this quickly. They have to clear so many areas and then put pressure so deep to punish Karen and Munchkin. Already the lineup sailing across. Dart not quite broken. Reveal onto multitudes of targets. Again, this all causing issues, and it is too much to overcome. Too much to clear. Alts are being rattled off here. Texture from the high ground, eventually traded. And now the flash, pop flash, round the corner. Tens, it was on dodge. Meteor, massive play. Second sticking inside the cage, broken. Destroyed and dropped. Genji finding that fifth, but you're right, Josh. It all began just how long it took Sen to really get their ground, get started onto the retake. Frankly, the push into main, I have no problems with. Ten's doing a great job, but how is Meteor turning this and still getting a double kill out of it? If you remember back to the defense side pistol that Sen ran on this map against Genji, they flash peaked second in Meteor, dodged it, got the kill. I'm just getting flashbacks of that again. The Gen G players are so skilled and have demonstrated that all year. You think you haven't dead to rights, you simply do not. Slight edge being held now for Gen G. Rounds have been oscillating wildly back and forth. It follows the trends, it's Sen's turn. Gen G playing quite split up though, two players. Texture and Charon. A dynamic duo, been making waves. See if they can do any damage at least focusing on that. That was a potential reclear being called there by Sen, and it let's just go even. And no flash peak being used there, so that was just a dry double swing. One for one. And Munchkin's wall not going to be available to them if they hit A. So that puts more pressure on Karen now. But he still has the ult to be able to work with, so not a major problem for Genji. Aggressive tens is holding this angle. Not a far back position. He wants to hold them before they can even get themselves into the choke. Locking it down, deep dart, potential setup. Waiting for the sound cue, doesn't get broken. Yeah, I think if that dart had been broken, he was looking to flash peek in there and make the play to win the round. The time is getting so low. If they can play in front of the Cosmic Divide, oh, Sassy goes down. Head rips clean off, dart through into the back, the Cosmic Divide gives him the perfect exit strategy here. Pop flash through, the texture, he was aware of it. Facing away or at least dodging it. And any chances for Sentinels into this round? Crumbled Spike once planted. more before our eyes. It's again, Genji in astounding control. Commanding position there. Having lost the Viper early on, to still be able to deal with that A main aggression and come out on top is pretty excellent. Genji, we're talking about the fact that their composition, honestly, they're happier with it on the attack side, or at least people expect them to do more on the attack side with this comp. And that was what blew us all away when Sen played against Genji last. Now we're really seeing how comfortable they are in these spots. It doesn't all have to be fast execs with the Jet and the Yoru. Celsius would love to keep the weaponry. Oh, no way. Flash through. He spotted it? Texture. Plenty more players, oh! though. Texture spotted him. Cage three. QT, last one left, slowly being hunted. We'll push back. The enemies and adversaries. So if they do keep at least one gun into the round, but already you're looking at almost similar scenes here. And here's that opening when they try to re-clear out through. An unbelievable Main. shot onto Munchkin, but the trade's still coming through. 
The level of quality in terms of the rifling in this match yeah. is unbelievable. But we didn't get to see it in the upper bracket final between these two teams. Sen talked about, Kaplan in particular mentioned, the atmosphere was bad when they began that game and they crumbled on split. It set the entirety of the series off on a bad note and Sen, though they tried to recover it on Lotus, ended up going out in a flop. Now we are actually seeing Zekin, Tens, hitting really nice shots, bringing it to the Gen G players, making it more of a game that's about how they play the macro and how prepared Gen G are rather than just running over them with the exactly. individualism. Because that's the first step, right? To conquer Gen G, you kind of just need to be matching them pound for pound with the aim. And man, how difficult that is, because Texture, Meteor, Karen are all up there with the best players in the world Lights right out. now. In Lights terms out. of form, they might be like all three in the top five. I don't know who else you would put up there because you watch Texture Meteor or Karen in a 1v1 against anybody else in this tournament, you have to favor them. Yeah, you do. I mean, they're just cerebral. The way they move, instinctual in nature, really. The way they tackle and handle a lot of those clutches and just the aim and the movement on top of it. It's all there, perfect package for a lot of those players. So that is the first obstacle that Sen have to remove. You're getting that confidence back, at least. Making moves now towards mid, though, here. Creeping it's more and crawling. It's a kill trip, but with no one really to play off it here. All given up, so Meteor once more building up towards dimensional drift. On his way through, he'll be able to clear out most of this side as well. Basically, the human drone just spotting out these trips. Kill trip, lucky. Oh. Wait a second, John QT is there onto the angle in time. Gets the punish onto Lackier. Caron. The chance really for him to clean up, but no, the crosshair placement just wasn't expecting that one. The deep contact play and push out from Sentinels. On the first time, so it feels like they're in a really advantage situation. Yeah, definitely. They're realizing the fact that Karen and Munchkin are going to be playing in very passive positions. They found them both. They even isolate Munchkin, who's so far away. And yes, this has taken a lot of time, but it's set them up in a great situation to win the round. Chance of playing the lineups anymore for Munchkin Meteor. Texture have to go absolutely massive, but the instantaneous there with the trade and shut down in time. So the Sentinels are willing to make it that repeat of what happened last time these two teams clashed here. And that fourth one on the board, steadily, slowly but surely, chipping away, trying to make it at least even at the half. Look how John gets at it after the kill trip came through, but it's this repush, not looking to try to go for the retake at all, fully waiting to try to flush out Karen and Munchkin before they ever go towards sight. It's a great adaptation. It shows that they understand how Genji are playing the post plans. This is the kind of stuff that made Sentinel split so scary. You know, we'll, we'll forget about the last two times we played it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they've had their confidence knocked there as well. Tell that just from the Get way that the map veto ended up shaking out. Wasn't the first map that they ended up picking. Deep diet here. Texture want to take advantage of this one, but it's they broken. Sassy using it. They did miss second. Hello. Spots it. Up in the air. It's all about the reactions. Follow through there. Just a close, but a shorty. Defending the area and teammates flooding back in. All to his avail. Munchkin, though, has managed to get himself a gap into the A site. But the spike has been dropped down into the center of the mid, and it's all down to the individual plays. You can see Caron also thinking about the same thing here. And Munchkin, a little territory gain down into mid for Sen, but they need to keep their eye on almost every single angle here. And guess what? Plenty of backs facing away from them. Caron, it's majestic. And just like that, turned away, ripped away. What should have been a slam dunk, Sen? Left looking in every possible direction, barely able to get it, but they do in the end. Here on with another one, another death blow, a dagger to the heart of Sen. Another round where Sen getting themselves into a hugely advantaged position, but because they played this specific style of using second as bait and everybody flooding through from tunnel and double doors to try to help. They gave up the sights and Genji are just too smart with it. They read it, they react so quickly and get into positions where their players can pull off magic like that. Final round, Zek and Glass Cannon Operator. You're watching here as he tries to take contact. Dodging that initial wave of utility. Be too many targets. Now, once so more, Brent. Him. Sassy drones out through B main, making it feel like perhaps there's some level of aggression happening over there. They're trying to prompt the reactions out of Gen G. But this team is so smart. 
They wait for a full commitment before they decide to do stuff like that. And Munchkin's the playmaker actually here, making his way all the way up through halls. It's not a full commitment on the A split just yet. Not quite. Trying to make a play or get some info. He does like to take the initiative though. Give that player to watch for here, Meteor. Holding. Keep it's a util, potentially the flash there, I believe, in his hands, but can twice about it. And again, it's just pure silence. They're letting Sentinel stew, hoping that they make a mistake. No real reaction though from Sen. They're not going to get baited into defensive aggression. Now the drone at least should trigger that reaction with the knife down. Castles it! Reactions there from Zekin. Repositions there with a the dash, but might want another go of things still. With the door open wide, he realizes it is back. It's open to two different directions, and he's left. really got to try and watch this one here, at least get some help from the rest of his team. Tenji are moving into the opposite side of the map. Yeah, they're going towards Zelsis, who's reinforced with John Cudi's utility. <laughs> Players haven't budged, snared into space. Else is hearing that one broken. Now wants to take the fight to him. Out wide onto the wall here. Caron, he's worked and wiggled his Trapped way the into the back of the side again. Left. Back to it, reload. Oh my, seven seconds left with the spike drop down. Sentinel surely a favorite, and yes, indeed they are. No chances here in the final round of this first half. Not for Munchkin. So maybe, you got to think, it's a better look for Sentinels here on Breeze. A much more competitive opening to this game on a map where most would write them off. Genji dominated this map when the sides were flipped last time we saw it. He had great awareness, dodged the drone, used the knife to cancel it, punish the player coming in. There was a trip there onto Texture. He had to kind of adjust in mid-air and Zelsis caught him, plucked him out the air like a butterfly. Absolutely insane stuff for the first half. Guess what, plenty more left to go in Breeze. Let's send it down to the analyst desk to discuss everything so far. Thank you so much. Wow, what a way to start things off. But let's just jump right into it. Our Verizon high-speed moment of the match came in the first half. We had multiple, as a matter of fact. It was kind of, you know, your choice pick of the litter here, Hypoc, because Zekin, this kid's putting on a show today. Yeah, I mean, just looks so clean time and time again in these high-pressure scenarios as well. Last alive here, They're like back against the wall, to try and find a bailout round to really try and recover this. Um, and it's, we're so used to seeing him now in this scenario. Yeah, And it's ridiculous, because this guy just turned 19 in his first international final. He had that birthday while he was here in Spain. And the journey for this guy has been long. When we first saw him internationally, he was only 17 years old, That's playing wild. with Exit on <laughs> yeah. stage. At the time I talked to, his parents were there with him, going along to Istanbul, but they've been with him the whole way. This is a picture from America's of his grandma out with him, supporting in the crowd. He's a young guy, but he's had his family all the way behind him throughout his journey here in Valorant. And now he's at a point where he's in an international final and really in that discussion for best player in the world. Yeah, what's so impressive here about Zekin is just not only does he carry himself like an absolute pro, but the man is just so meticulous in the server, high puck. But he's going to need to continue to output more if this team wants to get back into yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Josh was leaning on this in the cast as well. You've got people on the other side, Texture, Meteor to really overcome. Karen obviously being the clutch master on that controller role. Zekin's definitely going to have his hands full today if he wants to continue frontlining versus this Gen.G roster. Genji's post plant's got them a great half here, but their comp also excels in the retakes. They have a lot of util to bully Sentinels out. Genji looking strong in this first map. Yeah, it's going to be very, very difficult here for Sentinels. And for Genji, hey, it ain't going to be a walk in the park either. I'm expecting some fireworks in this second half. Let's send it back over to Brennan's Sideshow. The pistol round is where it really needs to start here for Sentinels. I mean, we've already been highlighting the real importance of it. Genji winning. Was it six out of six when they last played each other? Yeah. So now seven out of seven. And heading into the eighth, Sen need to be able to get some of those online. And this is the half where we saw Sen have no success. Kaplan said that they came in with an anti-strat that they thought would work, but called it wishful thinking in hindsight. Oh, wait, is Meteor just taking that fight straight up? Good punish, though. A lot of damage. Yeah, it's not the kill, but they forced that back. Deny Genji a little bit of space. And now this drone's really going to make it feel like it's a commitment into B. Instead, the spike is going in the completely opposite direction, I think. This is looking more like an A split, where you rely on the fact that Zekin has holes control. Genji, they do play to those sound cues. Oh my, just missing a chance and the timing there for Tens, but with the orb now bloomed and blossomed, can start to get a move on onto the A site still. It's Caron. Locked down into the corner position. Guess what, Zekin punishing the rotation! And three heads roll. Down and out here, Caron blinded as anything, cannot win his fight out. Zekin, the chanting for it, 
You can feel it, the roar of the crowd behind him. And he knows what they want. Ten spots him. Munchkin spotted. Ow! Oh, wow! <laughs> Denied! But that is the first pistol that Sen have put on the board in the rivalry that's blossoming between these two teams. And what a fantastic attack side strat that is. So, so much better against Gen G than what they were pulling out in the third map of the upper bracket final. They call a fake, they use the advantage of having map control, they use holes against a team that has a solo initiator. It just ticks every single box to me. Learning from the failures of before. Of how rotate heavy Gen G play, I mean, maybe a bit of fakes and finesse might be just exactly what Sentinel's ordered. Clearly doing that prep work here. Now the orbs can be farmed up, granted for them, without too much pushback. Of course, got to be aware, there's always a chance that they could fight back. There's a slight bit of danger in this round, Bren, because Meteor managed timing the recon dart that Sassy threw into mid, I believe. So they have no idea that Meteor is positioned this deep, but no one on Sen looks like they want to get into that area at all. Sen running a default looking a little more like when Loud played against Gen G, not going for the early round group ups in A main, but happily now grouping up together to make sure that they can trade out the lower eco players. And like I said, I don't think they realize that Meteor is this deep. Meteor going for walkabout as a face early on. John surely hearing this one now facing him, but it's too much to overcome there. Meteor with that Sheriff. And again, a bit of stray damage through Tens. Let's try and at least lock this one down in to the side of the smoke. Oh, 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 oh but they have there. found him. Right click bundle diff, apparently so. Three players still left to stand here for Meteor. Find that one, maybe could be a chance, but it does go down in the end. Traded with the nade, flushed out wide and found in the end. There it is. It is a conversion for Sen. It looked a little difficult to be able to get across the line. It's always going to be tough when Genji have smokes that you have to play around. They're flashing into the smoke here to blind Karen. Clearly, they have a good understanding of how Karen's going to be playing. I think one of the key antis that they came into the last time on Breeze was that knifing Karen so that he can't use pulls, they thought that would give them easy access to the A site. In fact, Genji have way more layers to it than that, but you can start to see Sen looking to break them down. And now coming into a bonus round. Do we have another? Great strategy called here by the brain trust of John and Kaplan. And Drew as well. I should give credit to my kilt wearing uh, neighbor from the north. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly should, yeah. Takes a village after all. But it has been evened up in terms of that scoreline 7 2 7. And like you said, the bonus round is where Sentinels will look to see if they can get over that hurdle here. Texture. Tuck toast. Okay going to be able to play anti towards that one and everybody playing inside this cloud burst not expecting him he pounces up already just locks that one down he sent him players are left scrambling and wondering exactly where these players are coming from texture now with the dash smoke to play in four tens here but how do you really overcome this you just can't it's just raw mechanical prowess on display and an easy one is what it feels like here for gen g overcoming all sorts of obstacles that were thrown at them and I think that's an example of what was going wrong for Sen last time. Genji are just so good when it comes to defending the standard hits. And this is a very standard A split that Sentinels send in. Genji's crossfires are amazing. Karen can always play around Pyramid because he has smokes to dip and dive inside of. And then you have Lackier up towards stairs, texture in that gutter. They've always got triangles going on that are extraordinarily difficult to break. The weakness with Gen G's defense is to do with Lakia and him being overstretched, having to run around halls. Yeah, jump spot nest. heard. Real opportunity for Zekin to get that punishment. You are right, it is that weakness. That's why they have to put bodies into it. But now a double walk up and face. Zekin, got to be ready for this one here. Is it going to be clear? It's an off angle. Is that Lakia in a crosshair? Precisely on exactly where it needs it to be. Yeah, great reclear. Genji are going to go for those occasionally because that is the weakness of their composition and they need to make sure that they have info in that area of the map. Meteor going for an info peak when they're up 5v4. Everybody's got their backs turned to every possible position. Texture, though, seems to be more aware of it than he is. Shuts down. John QT Sassy out in the open. Turn into the back of the side and it is traded and cleaned up by 10 still. Only two to left stand here for Sentinels. We'll get control of the B side and the plan online. 
but even more so trying to overcome texture Wackier and Caron taking a time of it they know that Zelsis does not have the orb on the spike they can see that over towards mid so he's probably not playing post plants probably on site with tens pull up re-clear just feeling unsafe but they do take control of main once more they can play this post plant from this position still smokes are available Black leaves Caron puts that one up but a kill found still it's down to just tens he's got to do it all does have a nade but still he's got to deal with this and what a play to make texture so damn aware but there's the shot still will the nade land in time Lackey is sticking half spam damage he's just about got it unbelievable for tens that is cold that split second decision to pull out the fragment grenade and make sure that you have additional damage. What a 1v3. That's on a knife's player. edge though, isn't it? Look at it. One enemy remaining. But my God. Look at it slow oh. down. Oh, very, very close. He's drawn the game back eight to eight, where Sen actually have the economy advantage, putting together much better rounds using more of the map. And Gen G, even though they're finding advantages, Letting that one slip away. This time, Munchkin going wandering, tucking underneath where John QD's playing. This is always a dangerous spot. It's obviously a risk. If the player on window checks, you're just 100% dead. But taking a risk on a round like this where you have lower economy is absolutely worthwhile. Oh, yeah. It's time to do it. And, of course, he will be able to hear rotates if they go heavy towards B. And he'll hear them early, early enough to call those defensive positions. Here with the Bucky. I don't think he's going to be going for a peek here. Still wants to hold that close angle. The dart broken. It's going to be pulling players, actually. Reaction out of Gen G, thinking that, okay, well, there's presence there, but out of Drone adds another level to it. A bit of confusion into the camp for Gen G, wondering where the hell are these players landing with only 40 seconds left. Time could start to become a problem, but Texture, he was the real danger in this round, at least with those knives, and with him shut down, now it opens wide with Munchkin. Immediately there, no command sent. Flying Bucky Gaming! Lackier dropping 10 straight down to it. Removes him from the fight, A main control, Granted and gains, tucks it up and doubles up. Now with the drone over and attempt to punish. Caron running and gunning. Celsius time, 12 seconds left. He needs to find this kill, but a rifle has been handed over, and so is the spike. John QT, head on a swivel. Too much to deal with, too much to overcome. And surrounded, man, surrounded. That's the value of Gen G taking risks. I'm telling you, Munchkin tucking into that spot. You won't see him do it often on a rifle round. But what a timing to do it, and Lackier, oh. he gets the perfect glimpse of tens right before that. But also, they had no idea that Caron had already pushed down through halls and was in this position. Tens is coming that there's only one person in A main there for sure, because they just had no clue that the Astra was also ready, holding Lackier's back during the drone. And just like that, all of tens' good work in the 1v3 undone in a moment. Back at it with the economical disadvantage. And from watching Gen G, they love using Meteor's ult to help them defend sites. It might seem weird using the Aura World. That means there's another player that can't. Oh. Hello. Huge pick. Against his adversary as well. The nemesis on the other side of things. A clear win con is that Zekin can shut down Texture as a player. That's a fast reaction going to be called here with the Neuro Theft. Gives him a lot of information. Hunter's Fury. Sassy's hoping that he can at least set this one up. Meteor. Now wide here with a dimensional drift. He was hoping for a chance to really get that punish onto Sassy, but it's all cancelled in time, and now the rest of his team flooding in. Munchkin spots it, just the shoulder, and finally the kill. Straight to the dome, a wider peak indeed, but this is going to be faced down and sprayed through entirely. Tens finally deals with him. Pesky intruder to a site that should have been theirs. And Lakia is out wide, firing that util. A pull already going to be used and utilized. But three players left standing now for Gen G. Meteor already in position. A 1v2 for Zelsis. Doesn't know where they are. Wall up, reposition spots. Caron, splash. Blinded himself. Caron with the follow up. Gen G bailing themselves out of a rough spot there. But I think one of the key problems is that when Sentinels got in position to try to hit the B site, I believe Zekin's waiting for another piece of utility there. 
He's just delaying, delaying, waiting to peek at the right time and sets up Munchkin for the triple kill. If they had been able to move a little faster and had that set up a little quicker, Munchkin probably ends up just going something like one for one and sent her in a much better spot. Nevertheless, that was an eco round for them. We come in, eight to 10. Rifles again online. And Sen on an eco swing round with big ults for Gen G. Massive ults. So far this map, I mean, it's just been a tenuous tightrope walk, hasn't it? Either side, just Thrifty's making it nice and even, a potential chance, but overall Gen G just holding that edge. They saw Lakia droning through double doors there, so they should have an idea that there aren't too many players' halls unless it's being pushed. But that's not where Sentinels are going. Looking instead to dominate mid and set up this line. Karen is sometimes going to peak that. But it doesn't look like this round. Textures planted himself onto the half hole. He's walking, locking directly down into the tunnel angle. Can they cause a distraction in B main that pushes people into Zekken's crosshair? Oh, Zekken. It's all about the reactions, but Texture, of course, is favored. On LAN, already in position. It's all on Zekken. Celsius seeking to just sow that chaos and discord into the map, at least with the pit laid down. Genji. I feel it really imperative to try and clear this one, but they're already just losing players. Sentinels toppling like flies. Tens, he has worked his way deep. Gate crash now into the back of the site, so Meteor's going to be rejoining his team, and they have reinforced that area with 20 seconds left. What is the call? Jumping away and on high, but still they're surrounded with this pit. How did they even get themselves into the site? It's 12 seconds. Time working against them again. Lakia to play to do the most. Spoiler, there it is. Finally spraying them through with five seconds down. No chance of sticking. I don't believe there's any time. And even if there was, Lakia could have absolutely sealed it up anyway. Beautiful work from Gen G. And that round should be the first nail in the coffin here for map one. They're going to push Sentinel's economy down into a really rough spot again. And Texture open, opening things up. It just looks so simple from his point of view. All of these Gen G players, they're so skilled, they make it look easy. <laughs> it certainly isn't. Almost every other team has struggled to deal with Sentinels. Gen G wiping them out. This is a map where they're favored. And sure, it's closer than it was last time. But it just, it's remarkable as Sen take a timeout, what Gen.G have done with this squad. Yeah. This is not like Sen, where it's big heavy hitters returning to the stage looking for redemption. Gen.G, this is a new roster. Sure, some people have been here before, but others brand new to a stage like this. And Gen.G are on a nine match win streak, beating out DRX, becoming the top Korean team, beating Paper X, becoming the top Pacific team, and then beating every other team in Madrid playoffs to find themselves here with Map V2 advantage in the grand finals, two rounds away from locking up Map 1. To say the pressure doesn't phase them, I think would be an understatement. They look elated on stage. Just having fun. They're happy to be here, absorbing it all up. And yeah, I mean, listen, the pressure probably would have gotten to some of these players a little bit ahead of time when they're playing against the top, at the time, Korean team. That was DRX, even in just the kickoffs. I mean, Gen G, this is a squad that was put together and really, had a tremendous amount of doubters. But they have slowly but surely knocked down every single obstacle they faced and more. And now the pressure is on Sen's side. They've taken this tactical timeout and it's going to be for this round. This is them forcing up, trying to stop Gen G from getting to 12. Little jump peek there in case Texture was on the angle. Deep knife. Cage to cover their cross as well, looking to try and split themselves into B. Now there are players here, great dash forwards with that flash. It's all combined and calculated. Munchkin lays it down now he with the pits. Dropping down in this position, he's already found Zeltis. Where's the follow up? Where's the follow through? It's not there. Caron, the support of you till the smoke to just prop it up and divide up the entirety of the site. And now a tasty morsel has been claimed with the spike drop down. The advantage again, rolling its way to Gen G. It's Sentinels that are forced to react. Unbelievable play from Munchkin. How he's got the awareness and the composure to do that boggles the mind. Here. This is an almost impossible spot that Zekin and John find themselves in. Tenji are not giving them anything. Diligence off the charts here. No crumbs. Slight jiggles onto the angle. Never overextending. 30 seconds 30 remaining. Seconds left. Texture. 
Stray shot fired here, potentially just catching a glimpse. Opens wide again, John QT. That was his only chance, but there goes the op. Is there, op down, still 18 left, and they have to deal with Munchkin. Smoke down. Grabbed and out, Last dash forwards for Munchkin again. They weren't expecting it right from behind. It's the IGL Oasis. And credit where credit is due for this guy. Munchkin, one of the players with the most international experience. He's been into these events before, but guess what? On a completely different team. And the deepest runs he's ever been. Ninth to 10th. And now finding himself. Pushing up with an ace to get to map point in the first of the Grand Finals. And not just any old ace, not an eco ace, in an incredibly important round under so much pressure, pitting, running towards his opponents, making a mockery of them. Sen after force up again, but it's odds and ends. It's not looking strong. The scraps, man. Pure scraps. Take flight. We're gonna have to drag it into that territory to stand a chance in this round against Gen G. And I think they've found the most success when they've tried to find people, push people into aggressive positions, but that's almost impossible to feel good about lurking and then taking a 1v1 if your player has, you know, a, a bulldog or a stinger even. Yeah. You just don't feel favored. Contacting as well into these angles with texture, hopping. It's apparent, it's known. What's that little bit of fear, that little bit of doubt into the back of your minds? John QT, it's all about the corners being cleared, and guess what? Doesn't look like he wants to open himself up to it. He's not thinking about it. Not thinking about it at all. Lackey, punishment is there in place over the top with the knives, dodging, dashing, and away for one blade left. And for second, needs that rejuvenation. He's got it, but instantly again, Caron, the trade is there. Fundamentals off the bloody chart for Gen G, and this is it, surely, with the map pushed into the positions, already there. Clone reveal the position, flash through into the box, Sassy's out wide and alone. Scared for his life, too much to deal with, too much to deal with in the Gen G. Lead the charge here in our grand finals of Madrid, taking map one. Looking calm and collected, doing it too. It could be a long series, but Gen G are going to try and wrap it up as quickly as possible. They had the double map bands. They got to pick the first, and they've set the tempo. Certainly closer than last time, but as soon as Gen G got onto the defense side, it looked like some of the same difficulties again. Absolutely, and plenty of questions up in the air as well. Bind is up next. Gen G haven't played it at all so far at this tournament. What are they going to be coming out with here in our grand finals? Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm going to walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings.